There are far too many explanations out there of asymmetric cryptography that are overly simplified, even to the point of inaccuracy. I'm not going to do that to you. Instead, I'm going to give you a better framework of understanding asymmetric cryptography while still remaining technically accurate. Asymmetric cryptography is a set of mathematical operations that can be performed with one key and either verified or undone with another key. Generally, with asymmetric cryptography, one of those keys is going to be kept secret and not shared with anybody. We'll refer to that key as the private key. Then, the other key involved in the operation will be shared with anybody that wants it, and that key will be referred to as the public key. Now, here's the thing you have to understand about these keys. Those keys are not necessarily a single value. If you think about it, the math involved to do something with one key and undo it with another key entirely is probably pretty complex. Often, when you are doing something with one key, it's often multiple calculations with multiple values within an operation. So when we refer to the private key or the public key, that doesn't necessarily have to be a single value. A better way to understand it is like this. The public key is whatever values are necessary to perform an asymmetric cryptography operation. And the private key is whatever values are needed to either verify or undo that asymmetric crypto operation. The next thing you have to understand about asymmetric cryptography is that the keys you use to perform an operation and the keys you use to verify an operation can sometimes be switched. It all comes down to what operation you happen to be doing. So sometimes the public key is performing an operation and other times the public key is verifying the operation. It again comes down to the specific operation that you're doing. And with asymmetric cryptography, there are three possible operations that can exist. Encryption, signatures, and key exchanges. Now, we'll be going into more details on each of these in the next few lessons in this series. But for now, I just want to give you a high-level understanding of the point that I was trying to make. Let's focus on encryption for a moment. If you think about it, when you encrypt something, you only want the intended party to be able to decrypt it. So it doesn't make sense to do encryption with the private key, but undo it with the public key. So in the case of asymmetric encryption, the only thing that makes sense is to perform the operation with the public key and undo the operation with the private key. Signatures are sort of the opposite. With the signature, you don't want anybody to be able to sign something. You only want an individual user to be able to sign something. Think about your driver's license or your ID card or your passport. It should be only you that can sign that document. So with a signature, it only makes sense if the private key is performing the operation and the public key is used to verify the operation. Which brings us to key exchanges. Key exchanges are a little bit different. They're sort of special in that both the public key and the private key are used to perform the key exchange and attain the end result of a key exchange, which is to acquire a shared secret. So in the case of key exchanges, both the public and private keys are used to perform the operation. And I promise that'll make much more sense later on in the course when we talk about key exchanges. For now, I just want to really drive home the point that with asymmetric cryptography, the key you use to perform or undo an operation is dependent upon the specific operation you're doing. Sometimes the public key does the operation and private key undoes the operation, and sometimes it's the opposite. So that takes care of talking about the operations that exist in asymmetric cryptography. Next, I want to talk about the algorithms that you can use to perform these operations. There are three possible algorithms that you can use to do each of these asymmetric cryptography operations. RSA stands for Rivest Shamir Edelman. These are the last names of the gentleman that created this particular algorithm. DSA is the Digital Signature Algorithm, and DH is the Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange. But here's something else you have to understand about asymmetric cryptography. Not every asymmetric cryptography algorithm can be used for every single operation. RSA, in fact, is the only algorithm that can be used for all three operations. DSA is a signature algorithm. It can only be used to do signatures. There is no such thing as DSA encryption or DSA key exchanges. And Diffie-Hellman, as you can guess, is a key exchange algorithm. It can only be used for the purpose of key exchanges. You cannot do encryption and signatures with Diffie-Hellman. So that wraps up our introduction to asymmetric cryptography. Over the next few lessons in this series, we'll be looking at the operations and the algorithms that provide them in more detail. But that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.